Hey guys, this is exam help once again. I'm going to go through the uh, triplet code. So, I'm going to bring up a section of DNA. And there we go. So this is uh, just a little section of DNA. And a gene is just a section of DNA that contains coded information for making polypeptides. So a certain gene will code for the, cert for the production of certain amino acids for a particular polypeptide. As we know from going over proteins, that polypeptides can combine in the quaternary structure to form proteins. Uh, as enzymes are also proteins, enzymes control the body's chemical reactions, and therefore the genes, so basically the DNA, code for the body's development uh, activities and its uh, chemical reactions that happen inside it. So basically, DNA codes for everything. So we want to know how uh, DNA codes for the production of amino acids and the triplet code tells us how this happens. Well, we know that 20 amino acids occur regularly in proteins. So I've got that up there now. And each amino acid will then have to have its own unique code that bases make. So we know that we have four bases that uh, are found in DNA, which are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, as it says there. So, if we were to use one base for a code for an amino acid, we'd only have four different codes that we could use. So, this wouldn't be enough to code for the 20 amino acids that we need to make. So, it can't just be one base that codes for a particular amino acid. However, by using two bases, we could actually get 16 different codes, but that still wouldn't be enough. So what if we use three bases, though? That would give us 64 codes. So that would definitely be enough. So that gives us reason to believe that uh, we use three bases to code for particular amino acids. So that's why I call it the triplet code here because there's three bases involved. So we know that the 64 codes that we we can produce and only 20 amino acids, so that means that we're going to have more than one uh, code for each amino acid. So some might code for one, some, um, some amino acids might have just one code, but then some might have four. As well as that, we have two uh, unique codes as well. And these are, as it says here, the start and stop codon. So um, the start codon tells the uh, polypeptide when to start producing amino acids in that polypeptide. And then the stop codon tells it when to stop. So we know when the polypeptide starts and when a poly polypeptide finishes. This is so that we don't get out of hand and produce huge polypeptides that don't even exist. So it just helps us to do that. So let's, let's give you an example of a triplet. So here's just a quick example. And we can see here that if I underline them, we've got quite a lot of different triplets. So there's one there, and then we stretch it out. There's a second there, a third there, a fourth there, a fifth there, a sixth there, seventh there, eighth there, ninth there, and tenth there. So we know that it can code for a maximum of ten amino acids, but say if we had the start and stop code on, it only code for the eight. So these particular codes will then mean so this code might code for a specific amino acid. This code there. But that we don't know what amino acid it codes for, so we need that information as well. So if we had that inf information, for example, if we had uh, the GCC, that codes for, I don't know, one amino acid, and uh, GTA here codes for a different one. It, it, it might work like that. But as well as that, it also might have the same code. So GCC here might also code for the same as GGG there or GTG 
sorry, GTA might code for C A uh, A G T there. It might code for the same one because there's a uh, 64 codes, but only 20 amino acids. So it can have in the same polypeptide the same amino acids. And that's just a quick run over of triplet code. That was exam help. Thanks for watching.